My name is Sam Baknin. I'm a columnist in Brussels Morning, and I hold an Israeli citizenship. I'm also Jewish, but I'm number one, an analyst. And so I try to maintain my allegiance to the truth as I see it, however difficult it might prove to be. Everyone is biased, of course, one way or another, but the trade of the analyst and the journalist is to minimize biases as much as possible in reporting and in analysis. But this is the second in a series of analysis that I'm offering you on the Hamas-Israeli conflict. And I hope you find it as balanced as I have tried to make it. In the ocean of analysis of the current iteration of the Jewish-Palestinian conflict, harking back to 1882, by the way, we've been missing three crucial facts. Number one, Israel's army and intelligence community have been rendered paper tigers by years of budget cuts, and they have been degraded by a lack of training and hands-on experience. Israel's military is prepared and equipped for a conventional war rather than for asymmetrical warfare. It had experienced a precipitous decline in the quality of recruits ever since the 1990s. Should Israel face a war or even mere unrest on five fronts, it will be defeated and will require the military intervention of the United States of America. But will the USA sacrifice its global interests for the sake of preserving an Israel under the demented regime of an authoritarian criminal, Benjamin Netanyahu? Will the United States divert desperately needed resources from a Ukraine on the verge of defeat to an Israel on the verge of extinction? Will the USA alienate allies such as Saudi Arabia and Egypt, however precarious their loyalty is? Point number two. The United States is supplying Israel with munitions and weapons, but only with precision and defensive munitions, because the United States is terrified of what the harried Israeli government might do to civilians in the course of its collective punishment, revenge, rampage. The United States is also worried about the expansion of the war to include Egypt, who is coerced by Israel into accommodating a million Gazan refugees, Iran, and even Russian-backed Syria. Such a conflagration would force the more moderate Arab states, especially in the Gulf, to abandon their alliances with the West and to act against its interests. It will also scuttle the nascent reconciliation between Israel and Saudi Arabia, as well as previous peace agreements. And finally, point number three, the settlers, not the Palestinians, are now Israel's greatest internal threat. Armed to the teeth, organized in militias, defiant, contumacious, violent, delusional messianic, and hell-bent on retribution, the settlers might regard recent events as an opportunity to ethnically cleanse the West Bank of Palestinians. They could yet constitute the most difficult and ominous front for the thinly stretched Israel Defense Forces. Israel has been reacting disproportionately to undeniable but limited and largely symbolic provocations by Hezbollah, Syria, and by a smattering of Palestinians in the West Bank. This kind of macho reflex is nothing short of suicidal under the current circumstances. It seems that Israel is far from humbled even by the egregious and abhorrent terror attack of October 7th. To borrow a phrase from the self-help industry, Israel has not yet hit rock bottom and is not ready to modify its behaviors, to soul search and to transform and heal itself. I sincerely hope it's not too late.